Hello everyone. In this video, we are going to discuss the importance of the duty and what are the different methods available with us with the help of which we can improve the duty of the irrigation water. So let's start. So the first thing that we are going to study is the importance of the duty. So if we define this duty one more time, so that is the extent of the area, that is the extent of the area under 1 cumic of water. That means if we supply the 1 cumic of the water, then how much area can be irrigated. So this duty, if we are aware about that, then it helps us in designing the efficient canal irrigation system how will that be achieved so if we know the total available water at the head of the main canal so obviously this is the let's say the main river now across that we have constructed one obstruction because of which the water will be accumulated over here and that water was diverted so that water which is getting diverted this first branching that is known as the main canal so if we know that what is the amount of water that is available at this point that means we know the total amount of water which is available with us for the crops and if we know the duty for all the crops that means if we supply a certain amount of water then how much area of that particular crop can be irrigated so if we know that value for the different seasons of the year then we can easily calculate the area which can be irrigated. So as we are aware that this duty is defined as the area divided by the discharge. So if we want to calculate the area which can be irrigated so that is just the multiplication of the duty and the discharge you can check that with the units also that the unit of the duty that is the hectares per cumic that is cubic meter per second and the unit of the discharge that is also cubic meter per second so that means these two will be cancelled out so that means we will be getting the answer in the hectare which is the unit of the area. Now inversely to this if we know the crops area that how much area is to be required how much area is to be irrigated if we know that requirement and we know the duty for each of the crop then we can work out the discharge which will be required for designing the channel. That means from the same formula that means we can calculate the discharge value that discharge is represented as capital Q that will be equal to the area per unit value of the duty. So if we look at this ratio unit wise so the area unit that is hectare and the unit of the duty that is hectare per cumic. So Simplifying it, this will be hectare and this cumic will go on the this cumic will go on to the numerator side divided by hectare, which will be cancelled out. So you will be getting the answer in the cumic. Now that is the unit of the discharge. So that's how with the help of the duty we can calculate either the area which can be irrigated or we can calculate the discharge which will be required in the field to irrigate the entire crops. The next point is to study the measures which can help us in improving the duty of the crop. So the duty of the canal water that can be improved by affecting the economy in the use of the water by resorting to the different precautions and the practices which can be performed during the irrigation action. 
So the first set of action that is described under the head of the precautions when we are preparing the field for the sowing of the crop. Or what precautions can we take? First of all, the land that we are using, if that is irregular in shape, that is an irregular terrain, so that should be perfectly level. That should be preferably leveled so that there is no loss of water, there is no deposition of the water in these depressions. So once we supply the water, that should fall, that should be moving or that should be flowing under the action of the gravity. That is the first point. Second one is that the field should be properly plowed to the required depth. That means once the field is prepared, the land is leveled. After that, what we do, let's say if this is the land which is to be irrigated. So after this, this land is divided into separate regions. Depending upon the type of irrigation method that we are using. So if we are looking at each of the parcel so they should be properly plowed so that the seeds can be placed inside that so it should be plowed in such a way that that the space that you are making that should be up to the required depth only and not more than that otherwise there will be deposition of the water in that hole Second one is that improved modern cultivation methods, they should be preferably adopted. The latest technology that should be used. Fourth one and the important point is that the alkaline soils should properly be leached before sowing. That means what we will do if there is alkaline soil, we will do the pH test and if this pH value that is H positive ions if that is hydronium ion concentration if that is coming out to be greater than 7 that means the type of soil is the alkaline one so for those type of soils what we will do we will flood the area we will flood the soil and that should be allowed to stand still so the water will get percolated into the soil and the rest of the salt they will be accumulated on top of that and which are collected and removed before the sowing process that means before placing the seeds next point which should be taken care of that is if there are the porous soils that means the number of pores which are present in the soil if they are higher in number then it should be treated such that these pores are clogged and which in turn will reduce the seepage of the water. Otherwise, through these pores, the water will be percolating into the ground. Next one is that the rotation of the crops should be preferred because it will ensure the increased crop yields with the minimum use of the water. Now, what is this rotation of the crop and why should we perform this? So, let's say if we are having this land and it is having all the nutrients for example the nitrogen the potassium the phosphorus all the nutrients which are required etc they are present in this soil let's say you are growing a crop which is requiring the nitrogen in higher amount so that means when this crop is growing it will consume the nitrogen which is present in this soil now once this crop is harvested that means once it is completely grown you will again grow another crop let's say this crop has taken four months of the year that means for the next eight months you will grow the next crop and again if you are growing the crop which require the nitrogen in higher amount that means this nitrogen will be completely exhausted and the remaining nutrients they will left out as they are present in the soil so to avoid this what we should do we should plant we should grow such plants which require different nutrients throughout the year so for example the first crop that we have grown if that is requiring nitrogen in higher amount the second crop should be such that it is requiring the other nutrients for example if it requires the phosphorus in a higher amount then that would be good enough so 
in that duration this field will be able to get back its nitrogen content to its original level and that's why with the minimum usage of the water the replenishment of the nutrition will be there and it will result in the increased crop yields the second set of the methods which can be used for improving the duty is that if we take the precautions in the irrigation supplies now what precautions should we take so first one is that the source of the irrigation water the point from which the irrigation water is discharged that should be situated within the prescribed limits because if that is situated very far away then there will be higher amount of losses which will be occurring and therefore the duty will be lesser so therefore the source should be within the defined distance second one is that the lining of the canals so if you look at the canals this is the cross section so this portion this side slope usually that is usually made up of the cement concrete or brick material that means it should not be of the earthen material it should not be made up of the soil because if this soil is present then it will be continuously eroded and if the soil is present then the water will be seeping through this so that should be avoided and for that purpose we do the lining of the canals this we will study in detail in the due course then the free flooding that means the entire field is flooded that should be avoided because that increases the loss of the water and there are chances of the water logging that means there are chances of the water getting accumulated onto the field and therefore the furrow irrigation should be adopted and if possible then we should use the subsurface method that means the type of irrigation in which the water is supplied at the root level and the best example of that is the drip irrigation in comparison to the surface irrigation they should be preferred because there is least amount of losses which can occur in this irrigation purpose so these were the different methods with the help of which we can improve the duty of the water in the next video we will look at the miscellaneous terms on the few other terms which are related to the irrigation terminologies thank you